when you open all these Western diverse manga, they still follow the rules, for the most part, of the high octane shonen Japanese manga, like a One Punch Man. And using my limited edition of One Punch Man Volume 1, we're going to go over the basics of laying out your manga pages to where they look professional. This applies to almost all Japanese manga. And I apply the same thing even for my series, Apple Black. We're looking at Volume 3 right here. Some of the manga I've shown are Western, so the reading orientation is left to right, because that's where it's originally published. Unlike Japanese manga going in the opposite direction, but the principles and ideas are all essentially the same. And in this video, I'll go over the basics of how to put your pages together to where they look industry standard and professional, and then you can break the rules and do whatever you want moving forward. A lot of beginner manga artists, comic artists, whatever artists make mistakes that are telltale signs of their work being amateur and this video will solve that problem. I'll use my storyboard templates to demo. You can get those on my Gumroad. The first thing to know, this page is on the left, this page is on the right. Keep track of where each page goes. Even if you're just working digitally, try to imagine what it would feel like if it were a book. If it were a book together like so, you wouldn't want important art to get lost right here in the middle. And that's what we call the gutter. So you have other pages right here. That's why when you look at your favorite manga, there's usually some space before the gutter. You can see with my page, it makes it easier to see the art, to read the text. The One Punch Man pages are a little different because each publisher is different, each printer is different, so the dimensions are not always the same. If you look at the individual pages, even the double spread, there was an inner box that we refer to as the live area. The vertical line closer to the gutter is usually the line you would want to use. Now you can have art go across, especially in double page scenarios, but you want to stay away from having important art getting lost in that middle. You definitely want to keep text within the live area. So even if you had a panel, say, cut like so, where you have a panel that maybe normally would have been kept within the live area, even in cases where you have panels within that live area, say you have a bunch of panels like so, you wanna make sure that all the text is within the live area. Even if I had a speech balloon that went across, the text should still be within the live area. Right now, all the panels in this page are in line with the lines of the live area, but even if we bled a panel to the edge of the page and you see this a lot with shonen manga maybe in an action scene and maybe something really awesome happens in this panel so they expand it and that's what is called bleeding to the edge even then you want the text to be within the live area because you don't want it to get lost at the edges you don't want it to get cut off maybe when it's going to be turned into print you don't even want it to be too close to the edge because usually the edges of the pages could be cut. They could be cut off in printing. So you definitely don't want to lose that text. So what you do is keep the text in the live area. Sometimes some people always keep the balloons away from any edges, maybe a little bit more centered, and they work that way. The balloons sometimes are within the panel. As long as you have a method to your madness and you can justify your decisions, sometimes you can have situations where a balloon starts on one panel and kind of continues in the next. So they can go over the panel sometimes. They do not always have to be within the panel, but a lot of times they are. During the storyboard phase, you're also figuring out how the balloons will be placed. You don't want to have a page where you have a balloon text here, 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 and then the reader's confused how exactly to read it. It's always best to be strategic in how you place it so they know exactly what to read first, regardless of who's saying what. Also, when you make panels bleed, you can see how we bled to the top and to the right. When you bleed, you bleed completely, except towards the gutter. The reading orientation for this comic is left to right. So this is panel one, two, three, four. And if I were to bleed this first panel, it would only go up because I don't wanna bleed into the gutter I don't want to draw things that will potentially get lost in the gutter. There are exceptions to this rule, but at least you know the rules before you can break them. It's either the panel is completely bled or it's in line with the live area. You don't want to have panels that maybe just end here or 
in here because it'll just be inconsistent. But if all the pages have the same live area dimensions, just keep everything in line. Don't go within, don't cut like so, don't bleed and then don't bleed completely. It just looks like a mess and unprofessional and it's very amateur. If you're not bleeding, you stay in line. Say this was a panel cut like so. If I bled this one, I would go fully to the right and fully down. If I don't bleed, then I'll stay in line with the live area. If there was another panel right here and I had to bleed this one, I would only bleed fully to the bottom. If I don't bleed, then I'll just keep it in line with the live area. If I was bleeding this, I would only bleed to the bottom. I will not bleed in this direction. Other things I don't do are panels that are triangles. So basically panels that are only three sides. I also don't do panels that are circles. But again, you guys can do whatever you want as long as you can justify your decisions. I don't even do panels that are five angles. Four is the magic number. Even the amount of panels you have on the page are usually about four to six. But again, there are cases where you might wanna do 10 or cases where you wanna do one. As long as at the end it doesn't look too chaotic and there's a focal point to the page, there's a panel that really draws you in. There's a way it leads in and the way you cut the panels, you're building tension and make the reader want to keep flipping the pages. Then you should be good. The size of the panel matters depending on the importance of the panel, what's being revealed, page hierarchy. Maybe you need the room if you want to draw a city and you really wanted to make it look good. There are all sorts of reasons. You just need to be able to justify your decisions. Usually in calm scenes, I cut panels with straight lines, simple, 90 degrees but if something chaotic is happening in the scene there are times where you might want to show that in the way you cut the panels as well maybe giving them a slant maybe it's chaotic but as things cool down the lines kind of reflect in and become straighter and straighter and in some cases as you start big panel and you see it becomes smaller and smaller and smaller you're building tension to keep the reader engaged sometimes you do this maybe in a page flip it's like something here everything is getting smaller to then make them want to see what happens in the next page and then maybe in this case let's say we had a panel that extended from the left page to the right for a double spread like our script wants us to do anyways it can extend like so or it can cut like right there and even in this cases if you have text or even sound effects in some cases you still want to have the text within the live area no matter what But now you can have art go across, but even then, keep the least important art in the middle. That way, no one's gonna worry about it getting lost. When working on the actual page, you'll be working on it flat like this, but you need to keep in mind that eventually, when people read it in print form, it's gonna look like this. So if a panel does go across, make sure it's not important art in the gutter, and then make sure it's not important art at the edges. Also, if you notice in all the pages, all the panel gutters, which are just the spaces in between the panels, have different spaces between them. It's much thicker when it's more horizontal and then much thinner when it's vertical. Keep in mind in your actual comic, you wanna keep this consistent as you will see later on. But this is an industry standard done, especially in Japanese style comics. The more horizontal ones are thicker, the more vertical ones are thinner and they're consistent. Also keep in mind how the comics are read Say so you had a page like so, these would be the thicker ones, the one in the middle would be the thinner one. But you, when you read this comic, you're on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Not one, two, because the horizontal line doesn't go across. If it went across like so, then this would be one, two, three, four, it's confusing. He's even even right now it's confusing. Actually, maybe this wouldn't be four, actually. It would be three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But before that line that's consistently going across and it's parallel, it would just be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, if this went across like so, then it'd be one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. A little confusing, but especially if you guys read manga yourselves, you kind of get the hang of it. Obviously there's more to it, but I think it's very important for you guys to know the basics of paneling before we jump into the fun stuff. Here are some more One Punch Man pages that follow most of the things we've talked about already. Building tension from the right to the left, flipping to then this big page reveal. Yusuke Murata, the artist of One Punch Man, is a genius. Just looking at all the styles we've touched on, you don't have to follow all the rules to a T. You can give it your own spin based off of your style. You see Hammer here, the panel gutters are not that different when you compare the horizontal ones to the vertical ones because Hammer has a more western touch to it but the creator Jay knows what he's doing and still makes sure that everything is organized and easy to read. Henshin is another series that has an even more traditional Japanese industry standard look but looking at the panel gutters here it may not be the exact same measurements with say mine or anybody else's but the principle is the same. Also when he bleeds the panels, they go completely to the edge of the paper. How you bleed is up to you. The page gutters are different compared to One Punch Man. One Punch Man leaves less room. The styles for the balloons are different. Some people always have it outside of the panel. Some people do a mix. Some people are only inside the panels. Some people have sound effects and text closer to the edge of the page than I would like. But again, printers are different. Not all dimensions are the same. Some live areas and cutoff marks at different dimensions. Joasha's is going to be different from Kadasha's and it's going to be different from Saturday AM. Some people experiment more with panel shapes. The list goes on. I hope you guys check out all these books. Like the video, subscribe. Links to everything you could possibly need will be in the description. Check out even more videos on the channel. And I can't wait to see the comic pages you guys put together. Now watch this video that goes in a little bit more detail on how to storyboard. Swap manga? You know, Audi 9000.